In this video, we're going to build this arcade controller and we're going to learn how arcade controls work in the process. This will be fun. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery and today we are going to be building an arcade controller. So a simple little DIY arcade controller and uh, in the process of doing this we're going to be learning about all the different parts how you wire them up and how they work in the first place so if you've listened to our podcast before the family geekery podcast or if you've heard me mention on the channel before i'm a big time arcade enthusiast i've built and repaired several arcade machines over the years and uh, right now it's easier than ever to do this kind of stuff the parts that they sell at the prices that they sell them at it's getting cheaper and cheaper now some of the quality may not be as good but in all cases you get what you pay for you can buy back you can buy better parts or you can buy cheaper parts but we're going to put together a, a nice cheap little project here and then uh, there are some options on making a little bit higher quality but we're going to have fun doing it and learn a little bit while we do so before we even start with building our project let's learn a little bit about how the arcade controls work and basically everything in this project is all switch based so it uses simple micro switches like this and and we're either going to have something open or closed so I'll explain that in a second but all these buttons that we push are going to be encoded by an encoder in this case this is like a, a gamepad encoder and this is going to tell our computer or whatever the thing that we're plugged into you know what buttons we're pushing are we pushing you know the, the jump button the kick button are we going up, down, left, or right with the joystick? And and this is going to tell the computer that. So let's look at these switches and buttons and, and learn a little bit about them first. So in this project, all of our joysticks and our buttons are all going to have some kind of a switch built in. And some of them you'll see look exactly like this. So if we look underneath here, you can see that these green things here are just a different version of this particular switch. And on this button here, there's a little micro switch inside that uh, that you push and in some cases you would actually use like if we use the old hap style push buttons then this actual thing would be attached on there and when you push this button it would basically be pushing this little clicky button here so these are the same type of micro switches if you're uh, f familiar with gaming lap or gaming uh, keyboards they always talk about the cherry switches and what color they are that's basically what's inside there and that's what what gives them that clicky clicky sound so if we look at this here, we've got uh, two real differences between this one and maybe the one that's underneath, like this joystick here. And the difference is this one here has been simplified. It's only got two tabs, and this one has three tabs. I've got one on the left here and then two here. So if we look real close, this one actually has the, the markings for all three tabs. So we can see that we've got this one right here is COM, which means common. Then we've got NO and NC. So NO is normally open, and then NC would be normally closed. And what that means is when this button is sitting here by itself and no one's touching it, the connection between the common tab and the tab that's not here, um, that, that, that they didn't even install, is a closed connection, a closed circuit, which means it's continuous. The normally open one means that it's not connected to this normally, but when we push this button, it will be. So let's demonstrate that real quick with a simple VOM. So if we take our digital voltmeter and we put it over to continuity test, then what the continuity test does is anytime you take the two leads and you touch them together, you get a, a tone. So that means we are completing that connection. So if we look at this switch here and we put one of the connectors on common and we put the other connector on the normally open, there's no tone because that's open. But as soon as we push this button, it closes that connection. So when we close that connection, it's gonna tell this encoder that we've completed the switch. And it basically means, hey, we pushed a button, whatever that button is. And then the chips on here are going to tell the computer 
hey, this person has just pushed a button. So now that we understand how a switch works, if we look at this one right here, we've got several different tabs underneath here that are pre-wired. Well, two of these connections here are going to be the switch. And when we push this button down, it's going to complete that circuit. The other two just happen to be lights. So this is going to be an LED, a lit up, illuminated button. So it just needs 5 volts or 3 volts, whatever it needs, to, uh, to complete that connection to the light, and then it's going to glow. So the, in the simplest form, we're just making two wires short with each other when we push that button. Now the same thing is going to happen on all these joysticks. We've got this one that came with the kit. We've got this style here, which is like a, a, a HAP style, more American style. And look, it's got four of these push buttons installed underneath it so that when you move the joystick left right up and down it's going to hit one of these long pieces of metal strip here which is pushing that if you can see the red button in there and it's going to make the common connect to the normally open just like on the uh, the simplified one we have here so in this case we can still see the normally closed tab and if we go from common from the common tab on this one, if I can get it all in my hands, to the normally open or normally closed, then it's always connected. And then the other one here is only connected once we, you know, move the joystick. So that's how switches work. That's how everything in our, our project's gonna work. And then it's just a matter of wiring it all together. So speaking of wiring, let's see how all this stuff is going to actually wire up to the encoder. Now this kit here is kind of simplified, where we're just going to plug the different buttons and switches into the encoder. Sometimes you have terminal strips that you're going to go to, sometimes you solder it down to a board. This one is kind of simple. Now this one's a little bit different than if you've seen the, the zero delay encoder. That's a very famous one, a very popular one that you can buy on eBay or Amazon. And this is what that one looks like. It looks very similar. The biggest difference is each one of these button connections here has three pins. So one of those pins is going to be ground. One pin is going to be your normally open connection going to the switch to see when, when a button is pushed. And then one of them is simply just going to be power, like 5 volts probably, to send to that button. So if we look at the button now, we saw the four tabs under here. You can see that the black cable here is actually jumped from one to the other. That's because that's the common or the ground. And then the other two, in this case yellow and red, are going to be probably the 5 volts and then that normally open connection. So one simple cable from each button to each of these little sockets here is going to give us the input of the button and it's going to give us the 5 volts to make it glow. Now when it comes to the joystick, there's a couple different ways the joystick is going to be wired. It could be like this one, where you're going to run wires from each of the switches to the encoder. Or it could be a 5-pin setup like this. So if we look at this one, the common is jumped around all four switches, because the common is going to be common to all four of them. And then each individual switch has its own cable color. So that's why they call it a five pin. You got a common plus four normally opens. Now all that gets connected to a simple five pin connector. You got your black common and then four different colors for your up, down, left, right. And that's simply gonna plug right into a five pin connector here. Now if you had a joystick like this, then if you look at the pin out for the zero encoder or the zero delay encoder, you can see it's got a 5-pin header here for a 5-pin joystick. But if you don't have a 5-pin joystick, then you've got 1, 2, 3, 4 connections here for your up, down, left, right. So you would have little 2-pin connections like this, but 2 pins instead of 3 for all of those. And you can see you've got 2-pin connections for all of your buttons. That's because in this case, this one is not going to send voltage to the LEDs. All right, so now we learned about our normally open or normally closed. We learned about two pin and five pin and three pin. Let's see what we actually got in our little kit here. So this right here is just an acrylic, uh, like a plastic case to, to make a joystick out of. And it's got a nice 
it's a black acrylic um, top to it and then a plastic tray underneath and we're going to mount our buttons and our joystick here screw this down to here and then we'll put our encoder inside here and it has a little space here for a cable to come out and that's going to be the USB cable that comes out of here. So once everything's done everything's going to be nice and neat and hidden inside and we'll just have a joystick and eight buttons and a USB cable coming out to plug into whatever it is we're going to plug into. Now in addition to this, now I got this on Amazon for like 25, 26 bucks. I'll put a link down below. Um, they've got uh, single player ones, they make two player ones, they're obviously about twice as expensive. Um, in addition to that, I've got a kit that's basically, you can get these on Amazon too, about 25 bucks. That comes with a joystick and several buttons. In this case, these are the illuminated buttons. So they have LED lights in them. You can get them without lights if you want that. You can get them with different colored buttons, you know, red, green, blue, white. Um, in this case, they're all going to be blue. And we've got several buttons here. We're going to mount. We've got the joystick here. It's going to mount. And then it's going to be pretty easy. Wire it together. Screw it down. And then plug it into the computer. All right, so here's all the parts I'm going to need to put this project together. So I've got eight buttons for the eight holes. And if you, if you do buy these kits... Make sure you get the right size buttons for the right size holes. There are a couple different uh, standard sizes, um, either in millimeters or in inches. So make sure that you're getting the right size to fit. And got one joystick, got all the, uh, the button nuts to hold the, the buttons on. Got eight sets of screw and nut. And that's going to be four for the joystick and then four to hold the top down to the bottom and then our encoder. So I'm going to start by peeling off the uh, protective layer on the acrylic here and I'm going to start populating it with the different buttons, get everything mounted, and then we'll start wiring everything to the encoder. Alright, so I got the protective uh, paper off of the, the top here and let's take a look at this real quick. And like I said, this is just acrylic. You could take and put um, a design on here if you wanted to. Um, I know for other projects I've gone to Kinko's design something, printed it, and you can print it on vinyl, have them printed on vinyl, and if you really want to protect it, you can tell them to laminate it, so they'll laminate it, and when you peel the vinyl off, you just stick it right on here, take a little razor blade to cut all the holes out, and then uh, you've got a nice design on here that's, that's going to last for a long time. So this may get scratched up a little bit, but like I said, this is just a cheap project, so I'm not too concerned about that. Now it is nice that they did countersink these holes a tiny bit. The uh, screws that they supplied are just Phillips head screws and they do have a very shallow uh, head here so that when you stick it in it's going to be countersunk a little bit there is still a little bit of a lip here if I was gonna if I was gonna be doing this on like a wooden control panel on a real arcade machine I'd use what they call carriage bolts and a carriage bolt is basically a screw that has no you know no Phillips or or standard slot in it it's just a rounded over uh, bolt and then you have to screw it from behind. Um, but in this case, it's going to be, you're going to see the shiny little thing here, but it's not too bad. You can always come back later and replace these with some carriage bolts if you find the right size. So we are ready to go ahead and start throwing some buttons in here. So it's just as simple as taking a button and feeding the cable through. And really the hardest part of this whole thing is going to be managing all the cables when we get done. But once you got all the cables fed through, then it's just going to sit down like that. And you're going to come around the other side and take one of the, the nuts. And you want the, the flanged end to be facing up, so up towards the control panel. So you're going to feed your wires through here. Get it all the way down to where the button is. And what I usually do is just hold the button with one hand and then screw this down with the other and just get it finger tight. They do make a button wrench that comes on here and tightens it nice and tight but for this type of connection it's going to be com completely fine. If it was like wood then I would want to really torque it down a little bit because wood isn't as dense as this plastic but once you get that about finger tight it should be fine. Now after years and years of playing this it may loosen up a little bit then just open up the, the case, tighten it down again, and you'll be fine. 
So let me throw the rest of the buttons in here. Peel these uh, silly protective plastic things off the top. And then, uh, then we'll look at the joystick. Alright, so just to have this somewhat manageable while I'm working on the joystick, I did throw a tie wrap right on here just to keep everything tidy for now. Now this is the first time I've used this particular kit, so I'm going to be kind of learning as we go here. But sometimes where you put the tie wraps on these and how you cable manage everything is going to be determined by what you're mounting. And this is fairly shallow uh, box compared to what I'm used to with a big, big uh, arcade machine. So if you look at this, you can see that where I put that tie wrap is keeping it just from being flush. Now, that's not going to be a problem because once I throw the four screws in here, it's going to hold it down just fine. And what it's going to be doing is pushing this tie wrap up a little bit. But I'm not too concerned about that. There's enough slack in each one of these button wires here that if this gets pushed up when it gets mounted, it'll be fine. The only thing that you do want to make sure of is where you have something like that that's going to be pushing up just make sure you don't have something mounted underneath it. So we'll have to find a different place for this that will be out of the way of anything pushing on it. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what it's going to take to get the uh, joystick mounted. So this joystick here is going to be what I consider one of the easier ones to deal with. So if we take a look at it, it's actually labeled up, down, left, right on the top. And if it wasn't, we'd have to figure out which each of these colors was going to if we knew the pinout of this and the pinout of the encoder itself. This way, it's already done for us. Now, if we didn't know, then we'd have to just take our simple uh, voltmeter and do the same continuity, continuity test that we did before on each of these things here. Now, one common mistake you make with a joystick is thinking this is up, down, left and right, but it's the exact opposite of that, because when you push down on the joystick, it's going to be pushing the switch up top here. And when you push up on the joystick, it's going to be pushing on the bottom one. So having this labeled makes it nice and easy, almost foolproof. So as long as we mount this correctly, and then plug this in correctly, which there's only one way to do it on the board, then everything will be fine. Now before we mount this, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, restric restrictor plate here, or the gate as they call it. This has four screws in it that you can loosen up and we can rotate this gate clockwise or counterclockwise. And you can see the slots in here to allow the screws to end up either all the way over here or if we rotated it, they would end up right here. Now, if we look at this, this is what they call a square gate. And as I move my joystick around, it lets it go in all directions and you can hear these micro switches clicking as I do that. So this would be typical of what they call an eight way joystick. So the joystick can go up, down, left, right, and then both diagonals. And when you do a diagonal like up and left, it's simply making contact with two switches at the same time, telling the encoder, hey, both of these buttons are being pushed or both of these switches are being closed. So the user wants to go diagonally up and to the left. Now if we if we loosen those screws up like I did on this one and rotate it around, now it's in the shape of a diamond instead of a square. And that's going to be what they call a four-way restriction. So now when I'm going up, down, left, right, when I'm trying to bring this into a circle, it's getting stuck in just the four directions. Now this is typical of some of the old games like Donkey Kong and Miss Pac-Man and Pac-Man where there was only four directions to go, up, down, left, and right. And this is perfect for those type of games. Now being able to switch back and forth is nice, and they do have some joysticks that you can switch a lot easier. Some are actually motorized, so you can just push a button on top of your control panel and it'll move it for you. Those are really fancy ones. But sometimes it's just the type of games that you're going to be playing will determine this. So if you only have classic games like Frogger and Donkey Kong that only have four directions, I would set it up like this. If you're going to be playing fighting games like um, Street Fighter 2 and stuff like that where you need to be able to do a circular motion, 
then you have to have it set up as an eight way. All right, now that we understand the different types of joysticks and how to set them up, now as far as mounting it on these, like I said, this is the simple style. All you do is unscrew the ball top and then you can take the dust washer off and we're just gonna mount this right into the acrylic. If you had one like this, then this bat top here doesn't screw off. You actually have what they call an E-clip under here and you take that clip off this whole joystick will slide out, then you can mount the flat part up against whatever you're mounting it to, then you have to reassemble it, put the joystick shaft through, put this, and this is what's gonna actuate the different types of gates. In this case, it doesn't have a restrictor plate, it has a different type of actuator, and then put your spring E-clip back on there. So with this one, nice and easy, we're just gonna make sure that we have the control panel oriented correctly. So in this case, this is gonna be up so I match that with this, and then we send this up through here, and then it's just a matter of putting the four screws in. All right, so I got the four screws put through here. I need to tighten them up, but if you look at the types of plates that they have here, it's got screw patterns for a couple different holes. Now in this case, the, the acrylic came pre-drilled, so it's a good thing that these matched up with it, and in, this is a standard spacing. Some control panels may have this wider spacing, which would be more for this type. You can see how those match up. But sometimes you just need to know that it's the right spacing. In this case it was, so it made it nice and easy. So now we just need to tighten them down. Now you can get a little wrench on there if you wanted to, but probably the easiest thing to do is get a pair of needle nose. Just hold on to the nut itself. And then come on the other side with your Phillips head screwdriver. And again, this is just plastic here, so you don't wanna torque it down so much that you're gonna shatter the plastic, but just enough that you know it's not gonna become loose. Now these could have come with little lock washers to make sure that they didn't come loose, but in this case they didn't. Those you can pick up at the hardware store for a couple pennies a piece, but this should be fine. All right, so we got the joystick mounted down, nice and secure. And we can slip the dust washer on here. Usually it's, there's some way to know that you're putting it up the right way. One side is gonna look more finished, so in this case, these little uh, circles here are probably not the finished side. This looks more finished. So we'll just go ahead and slip that down there. And then it's just a matter of putting our ball, ball top back on. And you can get these with either ball tops or you can get them with a bat top like this. On this type of joystick, they do just screw off and they screw on. So you can actually get different colors or you can get multiple different ones and change them out as you want. And most of the times on the bottom here, there is a, a slotted bit. So you can take your standard screwdriver, just hold that in place, and then twist the ball so that you know the ball is nice and tight on there. Starting to look like a joystick. All right, so the next step is gonna be figuring out where to mount this and get all these wires wired up to it. And the first concern you have is with the USB cable plugged in here, you've only got so much bend here, so that's gonna determine where it gets mounted. The other is this box itself isn't very much bigger than all the guts that are going inside it. So you wanna make sure that wherever you mount this thing, the uh, buttons aren't gonna be pushing onto it or the joystick's not gonna be knocking it. So after a little bit of trial and error, I think this place right, right here is gonna be a good place to sit it. And it's not gonna make the bend radius for getting that out, but I'm just gonna bring this out, tie wrap it down, and then fold it back and come this way. And that should be fine. I know you're looking at a black wire on a black uh, control deck here so it's a little hard to see but I think that's going to be able to work and I think where this is at here is going to be out of the way of the joystick um, the buttons were a little bit more densely populated now now that I've got that figured out if we look at here we've got buttons 1 through 9 and then 10 11 12 over here we've got a couple other special buttons here one for mode and one for turbo I believe the mode button is a way that you can change the encoder to encode this as either a D-pad or as a left uh, stick, like your left stick on a analog joystick here. 
So depending on what you're going to be connecting this to, you either need to give it up, down, left, right, you know, D-pad or control stick. And then just as long as your software understands that, you should be fine. So the software that we're going to be using, I think, will understand either one. So we will be good. And then the turbo is going to be a turbo function. I'm not too worried about that. So we just need to get all the wires into here. I'm just going to wire the buttons, the main, you know, jump, kick, that type of stuff, buttons one through six. And then I'm going to do the two top buttons, which would be like start and select, like you're start and select on a, on a joypad. I'm going to put those as uh, eight and nine, or as, yeah, eight, uh, seven and eight in this case. So we should have uh, six seven, eight buttons. So it is important on these type of encoders that you start at one and you go up. Don't skip any. Don't go, you know, to, to 10 and 11 and 12 before you do the other ones. So we're just going to go one through eight on this, and then we'll use the software to tell our computer what these buttons actually do. The joystick is going to be the easy one. It just plugs in and you're done. So let me get uh, some of this mounted up and wired up, and then uh, we'll be ready to test pretty soon. All right, I've got all the buttons plugged in. I got a little tie wrap just to keep them nice and neat. And then I haven't tie wrapped uh, the joystick down yet because I want to make sure I get enough slack when I close it all up. Now to mount this down, you could just, there's really no, since this is all plastic, no concern and just maybe using some double sticky tape and just sticking it on there. You can put a piece of cardboard behind it if you're really concerned. But I've actually got these little spacers here that have just a little adhesive on the bottom and we're just gonna pop them into the, the four corners and they're just little standoff feet and then I'll be able to stick these down to the side of the case here to keep it from rattling around so I'm gonna go ahead and get this mounted on here and then before we screw everything down now that I've got everything connected I'm just gonna kinda temporarily close it and we're gonna plug this into a computer and make sure that it's seeing all eight buttons, all four directions, and then we can actually close it up. All right, so I haven't screwed down the lid yet. I've just got it kind of closed up here, kind of tucked the wires in. I've got here the uh, little cash register that I turned into a gaming machine that if you uh, want to see me do that, you can go ahead and check out the link in the description below, and you can see how I did that. But I'm right here in Windows, and here's the game controller settings. And it sees this as a TS-AIB-MINI. That's just the name of the, uh, the controller board, the encoder board. So if we go into properties here, we can see all of our buttons and directions. So let's test out the joystick. And it's seeing all eight directions. And as we go across the buttons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So everything's in there, everything's good. And they are lighting up if I kill these lights here. You can see the joystick is, or the uh, the buttons on the control panel are lighting up a nice, nice little blue. So everything's good to go. Let me go ahead and finish by closing this up and then we'll uh, load up a game and test it out. All right, so I got it all closed up here. And I will tell you that it w there was a little bit of cramming going on. <laughs> it's just a little tight inside this tiny little box to get everything to fit in there. But it finally did fit. I got the thing uh, screwed down. Another thing I'll mention is on this particular one, I don't know if it's just mine or if that's the way it's made, the holes that are in the plastic base were a tiny bit smaller than the holes that are in the acrylic. So I actually had to thread the screws down through the plastic, which was fine. It was... It's just a little bit extra grab. And then I did put the, uh, the supplied nuts underneath also and tighten those down. So everything is attached. Everything is hooked back up here. And now it's ready to play. So let's test this bad boy out. Nothing better than some Simpsons to test out a new controller. You can hear the, uh, the clickiness of the joystick. The buttons much less clicky than I'm used to with the the hap style buttons. They they feel uh, 
They feel soft, but they, they activate pretty nicely. So yeah, it works out just fine. So this was a fun little project, and this would be something that would be great for uh, if you want to put something together on the weekend and uh, have a, an arcade controller done when you're done, or maybe put this together with the kids, get a couple kits and put them together, a couple different colors, and uh, make them your own. Now, if you do put, if you do plan on putting the uh, some kind of a an overlay on here, then remember, definitely do that before you start putting the buttons in, before you start mounting anything together, because you want to have that on there and then uh, and then thread the buttons through there. So let me know down in the comments below what you think about this. Was this a, a fun little project? Did you learn something about arcade controllers and arcade switches and buttons and stuff? Because that's something that a lot of people want to learn about. I thought I'd uh, share some of my knowledge. Now I've got a couple more arcade related uh, projects coming up so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss those if that's something that you want to see. And if you did get something out of this video then I appreciate the, the thumbs up also. There'll be links for all the parts that I use for this project down in the description below. If you have any questions about anything, then go ahead and throw it down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer it for you. But that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, peace out and geek out.